Regardless of the medium in which he worked, the name Picasso is synonymous with power, imagination, and virtuosity. It's very hard to imagine another artist ever again in human history being as influential, magical, or powerful as the great Pablo Picasso. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain how I found out about this. It's free. It's on your app store. There's a creation tool that allows you to record and edit your podcast right now from your phone or computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Please, I urge you, don't waste another minute. I wasted three years. I attended all kinds of events to learn all the steps. I was so confused and it was right here. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Do it now. Pablo Picasso's journey to genius began with a puff of his uncle Salvador's cigar. So claims the man himself. It's possible this puff ignited what some historians call the rage to master, a voracious dedication to push the boundaries of one's craft. This obsessive personality led Picasso down a lifelong path of bucking established traditions. I am not in favor of following any determined school, because that only brings about similarity among adherents. When Picasso moved to Paris at the age of 22, he fell in with like-minded bohemians like Gertrude Stein and Henry Matisse. From this creative cauldron emerged perhaps Picasso's most famous contribution to art history, a radical style called Cubism. With displaced noses and mouths and characteristic irregular forms, Cubism nicely encapsulated Picasso's aesthetic worldview. A picture used to be a sum of additions. With me, a picture is a sum of destructions. So it was throughout his career. Picasso constantly reinvented his style at a rapid pace. He created thousands of innovative sculptures, drawings, etchings, ceramics, and paintings. Neuroscientists have discovered that imagery like Picasso's invites viewers into the creative process with the artist. We relish taking incomplete clues and filling in the missing details. Picasso had an instinct for this dynamic long before science corroborated it. The picture lives only through the man who is looking at it. Good Wednesday, February 19, 2020. I'm Sabah Fakuri for the Heart and Home podcast. In May 2018, National Geographic did an article. In it, they talked about Picasso, they talked to his son, and quote, they say, nearly half a century after his death, well, of course, it's been a half a century, Picasso continues to bewitch, confuse, entice, and provoke. From his early days as an artist, Picasso shattered our most primal understanding of the world with his fractured faces and splintered perspectives. He worked voraciously, reinventing his style at a rapid pace. His blue and rose periods, the African period, cubism, surrealism, creating thousands of sculptors, drawings, copper plate etchings, ceramics, and paintings. Picasso's son, Claude, 
quote, said about his father's work, he went on to destroy everything we were accustomed to and created a new vision for everyone. Picasso was a messy man. He loved life at the circus and death at the bullfights. And it is this man that I want to talk to you about because he was a hoarder. You might have that problem as well. But was he a hoarder or was he an environmentalist? Let's see now. Pablo Picasso was a Spanish painter. He was born on October 25, 1881 in Malaga, Spain. Although he lived, lived most of his adult life in France, where he moved in his early 20s, it is there that he died at the age of 91 on April 8, 1973. There's a new exhibition of Pablo Picasso's ceramics that opens next month in March 2020 at the Huxley Parlow Gallery for Art, Photography, and Framing in Mayfair, London. That's near Piccadilly Circus Station. I'll include a link to their website and also to the May 2018 National Geographic article. It's the first time the artist's ceramics will be exhibited as a solo show in a commercial gallery in London. His ceramics are something that we don't know that much about because we are more familiar with his paintings, which were astronomical and probably the highest uh, selling paintings, uh, for selling for millions. When he died, actually, he was not a starving artist where many people don't even get to see the kind of money that they earn until after their death. He was actually exhibited during his lifetime at the Louvre and he was very rich when he died and he left a lot of money to his kids. But his ceramics are the result of a 25 year collaboration with a, a pottery workshop where he lived and where he met his second wife, Jacqueline Roque. It was during this period that spanned from 1946 until his death in 1973 that he produced over 600 plates, platters, pitchers, and vases. And many of them were very affordable. He gave many to his friends and he also used them in his home. Now, uh, Picasso's ceramic works have generated a lot of interest. Uh, their selection, like I said, is going to be exhibited at the Huxley Parlor. Um, and it's got anywhere from faces and animals, unique designs, and things that he made up himself. So it's kind of like his style of cubism, but only on plates and vases. Now, I mentioned in my uh, episode yesterday about the famous quote that Picasso had said, you are what you keep. And there's some other famous quotes from Pablo Picasso. I paint objects as I think them, not as I see them. Everything you can imagine is real. Good artists copy. Great artists steel. Others have seen what it is and asked why. I have seen what could be and asked why not. Art washes away from the soul the dust of everyday life. Art is a lie that makes us realize truth. Action is the foundational key to all success. It takes a long time to become young. Every act of creation is, first of all, an act of destruction. Inspiration does not exist, but it must find you working. 
Now this coming from an artist. These quotes can be used by any motivational speaker today. And like I said, that artist once said, you are what you keep. And because he did that, perhaps he could be called creative clutter because he drew inspiration from the things around him as well as from conversations and his memories. Another museum, the Royal Academy in London, is also holding an exhibition that exemplifies the life of Picasso and his clutter. Did you know that he kept old newspapers, wrapping papers, used envelopes, empty packets of tobacco? Yes, he was a smoker. And even paper napkins. In other words, he was a hoarder. But there was a reason for his genius. It was because he thought mundane items could have artistic interest. When the paper's piles got too large, he would clip them together and hang them from the ceiling like a chandelier. Is that genius or what? Part of what Picasso's passion for paper is on display at the Royal Academy, and it includes an exhibition of 300 works of art and items from his collection that spanned more than 80 years, which reveal his hoarding lifestyle. Compared to the tidy studio that Picasso drew in his 1931 single canvas on an easel, in reality, his own studio was chaotic, as revealed in photographs. Picasso's messy studio and his villa were overflowing with paper and boxes and paint jars. He was conscious of what he kept and even sketched on the newspapers. For many artists, chaos does mean creativity. Picasso's hoarding led to his animating his still lifes. He adopted his friend, the artist George Brock's modern collage style. And in 1941, tobacco packaging and newspaper were among the materials he used to create his collage glass bottle of wine packet of tobacco newspaper. Perhaps he, is a, he had accumulated too much and decided to put it to use. Isn't that the real reason why we keep our things? Because we think we might use it or need it sometime in the future? Only, how long do you have to hold on to something before you decide it's really junk and it should be thrown away? Well, Picasso lived before recycling became popular among environmentalists despite his practice of reusing almost everything he kept. Some might call him resourceful. And that's because he lived during World War II, when resourcefulness was necessary. Materials were hard to come by in Paris during the German occupation. So he reused what he had by cutting, tearing, and burning paper from his studio. He continued his resourcefulness well into the early 1960s, uh, when Picasso recreated Manet's 1863 painting using cardboard for his paper people. The paper piles cardboard left indicate how he left, but they also tell us that he didn't want to only be remembered for his masterpieces. Because out of his pile of stuff, the artist got his ideas to create those masterpieces we have left today. If you'd like to learn how to paint like Picasso, I'll include a link to a short YouTube video. If you'd like to own a Picasso, you might be the lucky winner in a raffle being held by the auction house Christie's in partnership with CARE. It's called the 
one Picasso for 100 euros or 110 in U.S. currency. Raffle, which is raising funds to provide clean water in three African nations. The majority of the tickets are expected to be sold in the U.S., with the winner being selected on March 30th. Good luck. Go out there and become an artist of your life. I'm Sabah Fakuri for the Heart and Home podcast. Please consider being a listener supporter and sharing this podcast with others that might enjoy it. Thank you for listening.